Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you've had a great Saturday. Hope you had a great weekend so far. As mentioned this morning, uh, overnight last night, very uh, just a terrible event unfolded as a worst case scenario tornado, nocturnal tornado outbreak happened. So um, my thoughts and prayers continue to go out to you guys, anybody affected, any loved ones out there. People's lives were changed forever and lives were lost and uh, you know, the death toll I'm still I'm sure is still rising and I'm sure there's still search and rescue going on. Well, I know there is. And uh, so <clears throat> it, it's really unfortunate when these worst case scenarios happen. It really do. You always hope for it to bust and for it not to unfold the way that's looking. Um, so, you know, just some of the damage. I, I mean, I'm, I'm I really. I really think that we are, we are going to have some kind of EF5 rating, especially the one that went through Mayfield, Kentucky. I really think it is. If it's not, it's going to be a high-end EF4. Um, but uh, like I said, thoughts and prayers go out to everybody. I encourage everybody to pray for them, guys. Prayer is powerful. It really is, guys. I, I've seen it in my life, um, even with just the smallest things that I've prayed for. Um, and, and then it, we've always we always hear these miracle stories. Um, with prayer. So um, pray for them folks out there for sure. And uh, so let's get started with this. In this video, um, as a severe weather threat is beginning to wind down, there's actually a lot of storms right at my back door about to plow through here in the Midlands of South Carolina. It's probably going to hit while I'm making this video, but uh, no, no severe thunderstorm warnings. We're all right here. Uh, but this system will continue to move out. It's going to be a chillier day tomorrow. But what we're going to do in this video is focus going forward. Um, we're getting close to Christmas. Uh, people are wondering, you know, when is it going to get cold? You know, are we going to have a cold Christmas? Are we going to have a white Christmas? Um, is it going to get cold just in time for the last week? Uh, well, the Christmas week. Um, so <clears throat> that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to, you, I've told you guys before, I'm not big on trying to predict weather a month out. I'm just not. Um, I even got family members who asked me, what do you think it's going to do around New Year's? I got this, that, and the other plan. I was like, I don't know, you know. But um, we're, we're starting to, you know, starting to figure out what could potentially happen. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to give my own opinions on it, and we're going to break that down. I, I do think next week is, well, this coming week is going to warm up big time, especially the mid to latter part of the week for the eastern U.S. But there is hints down the road as we end the month, maybe even as close as around Christmas, that we get cold again. And then there's maybe a favorable pattern setting up for January, but we're not going to dive deep into January. We're talking about December. So let's get going here. So there is something called an MJO, which I'm learning a lot on, but my knowledge is not even close to what some is. Weather is a deep subject, guys. It's uh, It goes very deep. There's equations associated with it. There's formulas. Um, it's not just face value looking at models. And for me personally, over the last year, I've learned, I've probably tripled my knowledge from this time last year. So I'm always learning with you guys. But one thing I can say about the MJO, this is going to be hard to, to read on your screen. I can't really make it much bigger. Um, if you want to look at it yourself, just literally type in MJO space forecast on your computer or your phone. You can check it out. But basically, this is a forecast for the MJO. December 11th through the 25th. What we do know is for <clears throat> basically uh, cold and snowy weather for the eastern U.S., especially the southeast, you really need this to get into a seven or eight phase. And uh, right now this goes all the way out to the 25th. So this little green line all the way at the end is the 25th. So it's forecasted to go to a favorable phase for colder weather around Christmas time or, you know, give or take a few days. Now, what that means is there's normally a one to two week delay after it gets to the favorable phase so if it gets on a favorable phase say who knows 26 25th around christmas time then it might not take until say early january for it to really affect our weather you know what i'm saying so um it's kind of like when you have a when you have a uh sudden warming in the uh in the arctic and the uh polar vortex um you have a sudden stratospheric warming occurrence that happens normally you know just because that happens i don't mean it's just bam it's going to get cold in the eastern u.s or the central u.s there's normally a delayed reaction meaning if anybody remembers the big time sorry i had to pause real quick but if anybody remembers well every, i think most people do remember especially if you're in the texas area the big time arctic outbreak 
in Texas back in February. That was caused by basically an Arctic air mass uh, that was caused by a sudden stratospheric warming event that occurred in the Arctic. And that occurred in January, but there was a delay that eventually it impacted the U.S. a few weeks later. So moving forward here, um, that, that's kind of how that works in a nutshell. Now, there's a heck of a lot more to it. But I can tell you here in the next week, this 6-10 to 10-day range, just goes to the 21st, 17th through the 21st, is going to be above average for the eastern U.S., for the south, southeast, well above average. And I'm talking... For instance, in the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, I'm talking about highs in the 70s, lows only in the 50s and 40s. It's going to feel like spring. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the good news is you're going to get a break with your air conditioner unit. Um, it's not going to be your heat's not going to be on, your air's not going to be on. Um, stretching, stretching it out to the 8 to 14 day range, <clears throat> this takes us all the way through Christmas. Uh, still forecast to be well above average. Now, I know you're looking at that saying, well, this is a bummer. And it is to me. It's to me. I've kind of just accepted it in my head that you know I'm probably not going to get that miracle white Christmas, right? And the, but things could change around Christmas time. Things could set up around Christmas time. So don't get your hopes up yet. And the reason I think that is because there is some model guidance in the long range, which is never reliable, uh, kind of showing that. There's basically some fantasy runs showing up, and they've been showing up over the last few days. So when you keep consistently seeing fantasy runs in the long range, even if it's in the long range, then eventually that could work its way into the medium range. When it works its way into the medium range, then you might have something to talk about. So keep that in mind here. But we look at the GEFS, and this is based off the 18Z information. Moving forward here, um, it's going to be a chilly Sunday, chilly Monday. But you notice each day, this is Tuesday, each day, look at these warmer temperatures to begin, this is high temperatures, begin to creep up. The only thing that's keeping us some cool mornings in the southeast is some uh, basically cool air trapped as a CAD event that normally, it normally happens with systems like this. But look at this warm air just shooting north. you got high 60s, almost near 70 in Iowa. Uh, any snow that falls is probably going to thaw out and melt. So it's not going to stay in one of them snows that are going to stay on the ground through the holidays. But you notice eventually a colder air mass kind of starts to, to dig down here. And we get into Thursday. It's still very warm across the southeast. Friday still very warm across the deep south. But a cooler air mass begins to work in. And we get into the weekend. And the weekend is still up in the air. But it looks like you get back to more seasonal temps across the upper Midwest. You break down that massive ridge, which I'm about to show you on the anomalies here, and uh, it gets back to more average temps for this time of the year. Still a little above average for these areas, but um, you know, going really far out, there's no point here, but I will go really far out on the latest GFS, and I'll show you what I'm talking about with these fantasy runs. So going through the week, I can tell you it's going to get really dry this week. It's, you know, it, no, I don't see any big-time rain really in the eastern U.S. or big-time systems this coming week. The only thing I do see here in the upper Midwest is the potential for an actual severe weather event, another dynamic system. And this is what happens when this jet stream shoots well north into Canada for mid-December standards. It's really incredible. And that is in response to this massive ridge setting up here and shooting up here into Canada in December. You know, when this happens, you have clashing of air masses. And this is what could potentially happen Um somewhere in the Midwest, and this is in the medium range, medium almost short range, so we have to watch to see if this trends into a severe weather event. People are talking about already, this would, that would be an extremely rare for to be that far north for severe weather. It's just because you have a massive ridge. The ridge finally breaks down a little bit, and then the cold air kind of dips down. Do I see an Arctic air mass? No, I don't, but this little fella right here keeps popping up in Texas, some kind of winter event. Um, that fades away. We're starting to get deep into the long range now. The jet stream begins to sag. You start to get more rain in the southeast. And then you start to see these fantasy runs. This is 9 to 10 days out, uh, getting into our Christmas week. And you're starting to see a little bit of run showing a little bit of snow. Get that on through. And then you see some deep Arctic air coming down around Christmas Eve. Um, and then you get this crazy run the day after um, Christmas. So this is that fantasy crazy runs I'm talking about. This shows a classic example of a CAD storm, what we call a Miller B. It's basically a, um, a two-portion storm. 
and you got a high pressure sitting up in there northeast funneling intense cold air and this is what you call a fantasy run um, in the weather world meaning it's a winter storm showing way out on the models it's never reliable 99% of the time it trends away from it or it doesn't even trend it just disappears the next run which it probably will but this is an example of what I'm showing you, you know it shows a major storm uh, the day after Christmas um, major 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 winter storm I mean this is major for my area the Carolinas it's just a devastating ice storm but it's literally at the very end of the run so you look at something like the European run very dry this week getting into this this coming weekend and here's where you kind of potentially can start to get back to more seasonal temperatures you get into next Monday Christmas week and it turns more into an active pattern with more cold air in place you look at in response to these temperatures very warm this week I mean look at this this is um um this is highs Thursday highs getting all the way into the 60s the near 70 in Iowa same thing with the GFS and then clashing of air masses the day kind of the day in the area we need to watch for severe weather uh, cold front sweeps through changing of air masses still stays warm through the weekend across the southeast if the European was to hold true, this would be a warm weekend for the southeast again, kind of like this weekend. But then, you know, towards the end of the run, eight, nine, ten days out, cold air begins to sag in and dip down, and we get cold again um, at the end of the Euro as we're getting into Christmas week. Now, these are heights, uh, lower anomalies, higher anomalies. And what I'm showing you here is, is this, this is the massive ridge showing up. Massive, massive, uh, what we call a death ridge. And it's basically, you know, it's basically a big time ridge of warm air. And this is basically shooting the jet stream all the way up here in Canada. So well above average, it's just temperatures just dominating the entire central U.S. Um, it's, it's a broad ridge. It's not like it's just a southeast ridge. This is a ridge covering up um, the uh, almost the entire U.S. Um, eventually some cold air dumps briefly into the west in response to basically a brief um, ridging that occurs in the basically in around Alaska when you normally have ridging in Alaska normally you get a cold air dump into the US where that cold air dump is it depends on a couple other things too do you have a negative NAO in place uh, that helps maybe the cold air to dump more east and this you definitely don't you don't have any blocking over Greenland um, you have troughing over Greenland um, but this cold air dumps and eventually it tries to work its way more east which may funnel in a little bit more cooler air and then you have big time blocking setting up over Alaska this may help a deeper colder air mass uh, kind of dip into the US as a little bit of blockings over Greenland and uh, but you know if you look at the end of the run you're saying well it looks pretty orange over the eastern US but don't pay too much attention to it what I'm liking is this and this is dumping some cold air to the west eventually this will bleed east meaning it will come east it really will um and that's what I was talking about around being in the right phase uh, there's a delayed response so even though these models are showing these crazy fantasy runs um, I don't think we're really going to get into a good pattern until we get into January, which is good. You know, I know people want to see snow around Christmas. Trust me, I do too, but I just want to see snow in general, right? So um, if we can get a very favorable setup and pattern in the coldest time of the year, then we're, we're working with gold there um, for everybody. But you look at the GEFS, the same thing. Shows a big time ridge setting up in Alaska. Cold air dump to the west eventually eventually the GEFS shows it well eventually you get to the last frame very far out a couple days after Christmas and it shows the wholesale cold Arctic air starting to dip down so um you know as far as rain you know when you have a ridge like this setting up the jet stream shifting into Canada which means uh, storm systems are gonna ride well north which means I mean you're just not gonna get much rain but eventually that 200 millibar jet uh, really sets up down here and we might get some more rain in the eastern US but um, I'm interested to see what happens going forward but but this coming week is it, going to be a big time weather model watching week is figuring out what's going to happen for Christmas week and going to the last days of this year because I really think the last days of this year 
um, are going to get interesting as far as weather. But we'll check it out. We'll see what happens. That's all I got, guys. Um, uh, God bless everybody. Stay safe. Um, and I can't reiterate enough, guys. Have a radar app on your phone to look at. Know where you are geographically. Um, I joke around, and, you know, this is this is a joke. But I joke with my friends and, you know, it, and even my wife, I say, man, baby, you're so geographically challenged because my wife wouldn't even, wouldn't even know how to drive to the ocean without a map. Me, I don't, I don't need a map to drive to the beach, you know what I'm saying, or drive to the mountains. But a lot of people would need a GPS to get to places like that. Um, it all kind of jives in with knowing where you're at. Can you point on a map? where your general location is. If you give an entire section of your state um, without every single city, without your specific city on it, can you point in your state where they around the area you're located? You know, it's a, it's a good question to ask. It's, it's not an insult. It's not down in anybody, but it's important information. It all jives with the weather. Um, but anyways, don't, I won't go on a rampage about that, but God bless everybody. Thank y'all for tuning in and y'all have a great and safe night.